some more equals us. Um, today, it's just gonna be me. Yeah, uh, I'm doing a solo episode today because unfortunately, Mike has not been feeling well the past couple of days. Um, but we still wanted to put out an episode, so it's just me. Um, and before I hop into the episode, just a couple quick announcements. Um, the pack, our community, it's open. Come join. Come chat with us. Um, we have a couple different, like, like there's a normal like chat feature where you can just talk to anybody. You can post questions and polls and we have some different topics that, you know, are going to change eventually. Um, you know, but right now we have topics of like dating and polyamory or parenting and polyamory or um, how to open up an existing relationship. And we also have a spot where you can ask questions of me and Mike. So any questions that you have, um, it's kind of like an ask me anything area um, where you can just ask us pretty much anything and we'll answer it. Um, and there's also a place to put... Um, like questions for the podcast specifically or like topics maybe that you want us to discuss um, in the podcast and just questions about the podcast in general. So there's that too. Um, but yeah, it's mostly a place for people to just like talk and connect. Um, and yeah, hopefully soon we will plan our first like in-person meetup for um, people who are in LA, but I mean, right now it's still a brand new community. So if that's something that you're looking for, then head on over. The link is in the show notes. Um, it's also in my Instagram bio and yeah, let's get into the episode. Um, oh, just kidding. Before we get into the actual episode, um, today I am drinking Kin Euphorics. Um, I'll hold it up to the gam camera for those who are watching. Kin Euphorics is actually, so I've tried this one. It's one of my absolute favorites. Um, and so Mike tried it earlier. Um, and so I'll tell you what his thoughts, but I'm going to try it right now for you. Um, here we go. Yeah, love that sound. Um, so this one is the... Um, energizing flow I don't know if that's like the actual name of this one but it's the it's like the orange one the like orangey reddish colored can um because they also have that like blue one um and I know the blue is like a nighttime one it's supposed to help you like chill and this orange one is like a daytime one it's supposed to help like energize you because it has rhodiola which is for energy and focus 5 htp which um supports serotonin uh gaba which i don't know if i'm saying that right but gaba uh which is to ease stress and then it does have a little bit of caffeine uh 50 milligrams of caffeine so it's definitely something you want to have like during the day um and the description is herbaceous with a kiss of citrus ginger orange bitters and hibiscus combine with warming functional botanicals to deliver a sensorial, hmm, a sensorial journey towards enlivened peace. Chill for conscious connection. All right, so that was a mouthful. Let's uh, give it a go. Yeah, so I have had this before. And it is more on the bitter side, almost like an aperitif, um, you know, like what, what you have, like at the end of a meal, it's that bitter, um, it, aperitif. It, it helps you, uh, digest. That's kind of the point. The bitterness is, has been proven to help our digestive system. And so that's what aperitifs are for. Um, you, it is like an alcoholic drink, but you have it at the end of a meal, at the very end, like after you've had <clears throat> dessert and everything, um, and it's this bitter drink, and it's supposed to help you digest. Um, so this tastes very similar to that, but like the orange bittery taste, I definitely, that's like the strongest taste for me, the citrusy um orange bitters what do they say yeah and and the ginger is really strong um and Mike said the same thing like the bitters taste is really strong so if you like that 
that taste of like bitters in um, cocktails, then you're going to love this. Um, and it's super citrusy. I know the other one that they have, their like nighttime one, is um, it, like a vanilla. It's like vanilla and something else. Like I think like blackberry or something. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, I actually really like this one. Kin is one of the very first like non-alcoholic like drinks or like, you know, substitutes for an alcoholic beverage that I ever tried. Um, and I really love them. And I have for sure had like, like three or four of these in, I don't know, over the course of like two hours. And I definitely like feel that lift. Like they're called, Ken calls it Ken Euphorics. Um, and I mean, it's like spot on that euphoric feeling. I definitely feel like, I don't feel like I usually get it after just one of these. Um, but if I have two or more, then like I'm definitely feeling it. And I mean, I'm sure that comes from like all the rhodiola and caffeine as well. Um, but there's lots of other stuff in here too. Um, yeah, that kind of helps give you that boost. Um, so Mike rated this a seven. Um, actually what he said was seven plus and, you know, I like give him a look like, uh, no, you can't do that. Remember whole numbers. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he rated it a seven. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm, I might rate it an eight. I think it's pretty on par with the first recess drink. It's just very different because that first recess drink we tried was, <clears throat> like strawberry and really like sweet and this is very bitter so I mean like the flavor profiles are totally different um but like I still feel like this one is on par and I think maybe that's also because I know I already know like the effect and how I'm going to feel from drinking it and that's that's a big one because especially if like I'm at a party and I'm not drinking and I have this it is going to give me that euphoric feeling it is going to give me just make me feel more in like the party mood and so yeah so I definitely rate this one an eight I think maybe after like one more we might have to like after trying one more I might bump up recess to a nine because it just set the bar so high and probably this would get bumped up to a nine as well but I think we have to try a few more before we decide to like change our ranking system a little bit but Okay, so yeah, that's the Kin drink. I'm gonna take another sip. Oh, so good. Um, okay, let's get into the episode. So like, what am I gonna talk about by myself on here without Mike? Um, well, I am going to talk about dating apps because there are so many and there it can be really challenging to like, find somebody to date who is polyamorous or ethically non-monogamous or just open to non-monogamy and a lot of the dating apps like the like normal dating apps aren't really conducive to finding partners who are open to that so I wanted to talk about the ones that are so I do know some people who date um who are polyamorous or are ethically non-monogamous um, and they still use like the normal dating apps like Hinge, Bumble, I don't know, all those other ones, like the normal ones that everyone has heard of. And that's great. You know, I'm like all for it. If you want to use those and as long as you're open and honest about like, yes, you're polyamorous or you're married or like whatever, great. I personally... I'm just not in that space right now. Like, I don't want to be dating anybody who isn't already, like, into non-monogamy, right? Like, and that's just where I'm at right now. That can totally change. I could see that changing, like, years from now. But I think because Mike and I are still, like, so new to all of this and, like, I haven't had a serious partner yet, like... I don't want to have to teach somebody like, oh, okay, here's what it means to be non-monogamous. This is how it works for Mike and I. And like, 
uh, this is what polyamory, like, I don't want to have to teach somebody that in order to date them. I mean, if I happened to, like, be out and about and I met somebody that I, like, was super into and I had to teach them, then, like, fine. But, like, right now, if I'm on a dating app, like, I get to be as picky as I want to be. And I think everybody should be as picky as they want to be on a dating app. Like, that's kind of the point. Um, And that's kind of one of the best parts about being on a dating app is you can be super picky. Um, And I mean, that's not to say, like, picky to the point where, like, you just don't talk to anybody or don't go on dates with anybody because you're being picky about, like, crazy things about, like, oh, but they're not above 6'2", so I don't want to date them. I mean... If that's really, really important to you, then okay, fine. But like, um, I don't know. That's not super important to me because I'm looking more for somebody that shares the same interests as me um, and that I'm going to have like an emotional connection with. I don't really care if they're 6'2 or 5'2. Um, but anyway, I digress. So, but I do think we should be as picky as we want to be on dating apps because like that's the beauty of it. We can meet so many people and interact with so many people that if we're not picky, we're just going to end up going on like a million bazillion terrible dates. And I have definitely been there and done that. And I have learned that like the pickier you can be or just, I shouldn't say pickier. I should say the more specific you can be about what it is that you are really looking for in another partner and what is really important to you in another partner, that's that's what you need to be picky about. And that's what you need to be upfront and forward with. And that's how you'll like screen out and sort of like sift out the people that you're just not really into. So... Dating apps that are conducive to this. Um, I'm going to start with like my least favorite and work my way up to my most favorite. Um, So there's, hold on, let me pull up my phone because I like have them here. Um, So there's this one that it's really just, it's okay. Um. It's not really for me, but it's definitely for other people. Um, shoot. Oh, oh yeah. I'm like, now, of course, I'm like, where did it go? Oh, it's called Fantasy Match. Fantasy Match. And it's just not for me, but it could definitely be for you. But it's more, it's really more looking at, like, what are your sexual fantasies and bringing those to life. Um, And so that could be like super fun if you're like, yeah, I'm ready to just like try a bunch of different things. And so it's, it's finding other people who are into the same like kinks as you and then like playing with them. Um, So like I'm looking on it now and it's like, talking about like different kind of sexting ideas and um threesome expert tips uh kama sutra fantasies threesome fantasies um meaningful sex shaking things up doing things different like so it's really looking at that and for some people like that's what they're really looking for like they are non-monogamous because for them, they're not really seeking other partners. They're seeking other sexual experiences that maybe their current partner just isn't into, right? Like that's kind of like what swinging is, sort of. I mean, swingers usually, it's like they are with one partner and they're like, they could be married, they could just be together for a long time, but they go out together and then find other couples and like switch partners. And it's like just for the night. Um, And you usually, swingers usually don't develop feelings for these other partners. Um, it's, It's strictly about sex and not about like developing like an actual relationship. Um, and so I actually feel like this app could be really cool for somebody who's into that. Somebody who's like, I don't want to fall in love with somebody else. I don't want my partner to fall in love with somebody else. I just want to have other sexual experiences that my partner just doesn't want to do. 
Um, so yeah, that's that app. Again, that one's called Fantasy Match. Um, yeah, so I haven't actually been on it that much, so I don't know too much about it. Um, but once I was on it and kind of saw what it was all about, I was like, mm, this isn't really for me. So I didn't stick around for very long. <clears throat> Um, the next one is called hashtag open. And this is for like open relationships um, and like ethically non-monogamous relationships. Um, and this one, again, I just couldn't really get that into um, because it just, it didn't seem like very user friendly to me. Um and I don't know, I just, I didn't love the vibe, the vibe of it as much. And there's not a lot, like, like, I don't really like that there's not much of, like, a profile. Like, you can put, like, what kind of, like, relationship you're looking for, what your relationship status is, um, relationship type, stuff like that. But, like... There's no, like, blurb about, like, who you are, what you do, what you like. I don't know. And just, so to me, it's all still based off of, like, a picture. And, like, there's not a whole lot else there. Like, it, once you start talking to someone. So, I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't really like that. I want to know, like, a little bit more about somebody before I start, like, messaging them or, like, decide to like like them or like whatever it is that you do on like each app um but again like this one so I haven't been on it that much um one of the nice features is that you can like add your partner so if you're partnered like Mike and I right we're partnered um if he were to make a profile on this app we could like link our profiles so then people could see us um, so also if you're somebody who is, um, like if you're looking for like a third, um, maybe somebody that like you and your partner would date, um, you know, like you both want to date the same person, then this is great because you can like link your profiles. Um, so yeah, like again, there's nothing really like wrong with this one. It's just, I don't know, like after being on it for a little bit, I was like, eh, I'm not really like feeling this one. So I haven't really used it that much. Um, okay, so the next one is kind of like, and it's kind of funny because it's like something I used when I was in college and now it's like still a thing. Um, sorry, it's harder when I'm it's harder when I'm doing this by myself because if I want to take a sip, then it just goes silent. <laughs> and like, I know I can just edit that out, but I don't like doing that. I really don't like editing this because I, I really like the feel of just like, this is really how our conversations go and how much time it takes for us to like think about these things and talk about these things. I don't like editing a whole lot. It's just not the same. So anyway, um, so the next one is like kind of a throwback. Um, okay, Cupid. Like I, I don't know about you. You know, I don't know if you used dating apps when you were in college or after college. Um, but yeah, this is one that I used in college and after. Okay, Cupid, and it's definitely changed quite a bit. Like when I first started using it, it was just a normal dating app for monogamous people, mainly heterosexual people. But now it's like totally changed. You can put in like your relationship status. Um, you can put in like, oh, I'm non-monogamous. I am polyamorous. Um, I am looking, I am partnered. I am married. Um, I'm divorced. Like, well, I guess divorce has always kind of been on there. But like you, like, Married was never an option before. Like, you could never create a profile and be like, oh, I'm married. Like, have that be, like, one of the options you can choose. Of course, you could always put that in your profile, but it wasn't, like, an actual option to choose, and it is now. Same with polyamory. It is an option. So you can put all of these options in and then search by those options as well. And you can say, 
like you can filter out like, oh, I'm only interested in people who are open to ethical non-monogamy. So that's great because that didn't used to be a thing on OkCupid. Um, so I actually really like this dating app. Um, I haven't been on it much recently, but I do still have a profile. Um, and I, I really, I really like it. And I also really like the like answering questions thing that they have. It's like you can, it'll ask you a question. Um, and then you can give your answer. Like, like, let's say like, I don't know, do you kiss on the first date? Right, like that's a question. And so you can put like yes or no. Um, and then sometimes you can put like an explanation if you want to put like, I don't know, because sometimes there's like more like, like that's like an easy, like kind of silly question, but sometimes there's like deeper ones. And so if it's like a deep question, sometimes you can put an explanation on there about like why you chose that answer. Um, but anyway, so like if this is like, do you kiss on the first date? You choose yes or no. And then you also get to choose like your preferred answer for like the person, the other person. Like, so when I'm scrolling through, I can be like, oh, I prefer no. I don't like to kiss on the first date and I would prefer to, you know, find somebody else who does not like to kiss on the first date. And then, and so then when I'm like looking at people's profiles, I can see if they've answered this question and I can see if they've answered it yes or no. And then OkCupid okay gives you like a percentage of like your like match percentage um, based on, based off of those questions. So I can quickly look through profiles and be like, oh, like this person is cute. I like what they have to say. And we're a 92% match. And that 92% number comes from the way that the two of us have answered all of these questions. Um, and I actually really like that. And because it, it also, gives me a chance to really understand who this person is and like more of like their beliefs and their way of thinking and it just it it really does help in deciding if like I think we would get along and so then that makes it easier to like decide who do I actually want to talk to who do I actually want to go on a first date because again like I said if you're like pickier or if you're just really, really clear on what it is you're looking for. It's easier to weed out people who don't fit what it is you're looking for and you'll go on less terrible first dates and a lot more really great first dates. So yeah, so that's okay, Cupid. Um, and then my absolute favorite, the one that I am on the most, I'm basically on it exclusively right now, is Field. Um, and that's spelled F-E-E-L-D, field. Field is my absolute, absolute favorite. It is specifically geared towards um, ethical non-monogamy. Um, so every, pretty much everybody who's on there, like, is on there because they're, like, already in a relationship, like a, a non-monogamous relationship, or they're looking for another partner. Like, everybody on this app, is like ethically non-monogamous um and so it's great and it also has that feature where you can link your partner's profile so like mike has a profile on field and our profiles are linked so when people are looking at my profile they can see like you know i talk about my husband mike and then they can see him and they can go to his profile and look at him and so i really like that because it also helps you give a an get an idea like if I were to come across somebody else's profile and they are um, linked with another woman I love that because I'm like yes let me let me see her profile see what she is like and see what kind of person she is and that gives me a really good idea of what kind of person this guy is probably looking for um, so it just, it just gives more information. Um, so I really like that. And then again, it's, it is like a normal dating app where, you know, you can choose, um, if you're married, if you're in a relationship, what, what type of relationship you're in. Um, and then of course, like a place where you can have like a little bio, like an about you section. Um, and so I love this app. I have gone on a lot of really good first dates on this app. Um, 
a lot and I've met a lot of really cool people that I have found really interesting and I've wanted to get to know more um unfortunately I just haven't found anybody that I've like been like super into and been like oh yeah I really want to like date you more but I haven't really gone on any bad first dates off of this app which is pretty great um I will say I did go on one date and I don't I I really feel like this is an exception um but I'm still gonna tell you about it because it's kind of interesting and funny um but okay, so there was this guy that I had been talking to back in like 2020. And I think I started talking to him like right before the pandemic. And then and then I just like wasn't on the app at all. And then this year, so at the beginning of 2022, <laughs> um, I logged back on and... I was kind of scrolling through like my old messages and I came across him and I was like, oh yeah, like I, I really enjoyed talking to this guy. Like we, we connected on so many different things. We have a lot of the same interests. Like I'm just going to reach out to him and see if he's like still on the app and see if he like wants to meet up now that like it's kind of safe to do so. So I reached out and he was like, oh my gosh, Hi, hello, yes, I remember our conversation. I really enjoyed it too. So we ended up meeting up um, and we had a great first date and he was like so nice and so sweet. Um, And like I offered to split the bill and he was like, no, no, it's on me. Um, And that's something I always do, by the way. I always offer to split the bill on a first date because I just like don't think it's right to like make a guy pay especially in like non-monogamy because like I don't know like so many of us already have other partners and like you know so uh, financial stuff can be different with like having lots of different partners and I don't know and so anyway I always offer to split on the first date unless it's like I just got like a drink and then you ordered a meal like (laughs) no okay then just pay for my drink um but anyway, uh, so yeah, so like he was, he was nice. He was great. But like, he basically said that like, he, he, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm like, let me gather my thoughts. How do I want to explain this? He had had a girlfriend that he was mon- monogamous with that he really, really liked but he felt like he just totally fucked it up with her. And and he realized that he wasn't very good at being a boyfriend or at being a partner. And that was why he was on this dating app in particular. And that is why he is polyamorous right now. He wants to date a lot of women and get better at being a boyfriend and so like part of me is like wow that's really great like I I really appreciate that realizing that like you know having that awareness and 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 for him to be like wow I haven't been the best partner and I want to learn how to be a better partner I think that's great but (laughs) At the same time, I'm like, good for you, but I am not here to just like teach you how to be a good boyfriend. So that way then after we've spent time together and you've like learned from me, I guess, what it means, what you think it means to be a good boyfriend, to then leave me to go find somebody that you want to be in a monogamous relationship with. Like that just doesn't make (laughs) any sense. I mean... I get it. And I know that like the dating books that Mike has mentioned um, in like previous episodes, I know that that's something that these books talk about. They say like date a bunch of women at once to like get better at just dating in general and get better at being a partner and then go and find the one person you want to spend the rest of your life with and be monogamous with. So part of me is like, well, maybe he like read these dating books and that's like where he's coming from with this. But like, I just, to me, I was like, I feel sort of like you're just 
using using me or just using the people that you meet like yeah you're wanting to like have a relationship with them but the ultimate goal is to go back to monogamy and so to me that just is like well then I I just feel like you are are using me to like gain a skill and then you're just gonna leave me like I don't know that it just it felt weird I didn't like it And so I was like, okay, no. So, I mean, you know, there are people that are, like, on these apps and out there who, you know, like, everybody has their own, their own motives, their own intentions, um, their own reasons for being on apps that are about non-monogamy. And so that's just part of the filtration process. Um, obviously it didn't say on his profile, like, I'm just wanting to learn how to be a better boyfriend. So that way I can, you know, I don't know, try and get my old girlfriend back. He never said that. (laughs) He never said he was like trying to get his old girlfriend back, but that was like, I don't know. That was just kind of like the vibe that I got from him. That was like, eventually maybe he was like going to try and win her back. So, anyway, um, but field, field is my number one. So field is my number one. Okay, Cupid is number two. Um, but again, this is for apps that are geared specifically towards like non-monogamy or or have options for that. Um, I have not tried dating on like Hinge or Bumble as like a non-monogamous person. Um, that's just not something that I've tried. So I can't really speak to that. Um, but yeah, field is like my number one app that I would absolutely recommend. The other really cool thing about field is that they have like this whole blog section and it talks about like different topics and different like issues regarding non-monogamy. And I just like, I think that is so cool. So Let me, oops. Um, I'm going to open it really quick and like tell you some of the, some of the like blog stuff that they have on here. Do, 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 blog. Okay, so most recently, Oh, history of the LGBTQIA community in Portland. That's like one of their most recent ones. Um, They have interviews with people. Ooh, a history of strip clubs in Portland. Uh, That's pretty cool. Um, Reproductive rights are human rights. Let me see. More Portland stuff. Wow. Clearly. So, okay, Field started. um, Like the company that started Field is based in London. Um, so that's like where the app started. Uh, history of pansexuality. Um, how to date on field. Um, I, I did read one that was, um, uh, where did it go? Oh yeah. Setting boundaries for casual dating. Love that right? Like there's just, there's a lot of like really good information on here and things to like help help you like things to think about like as you are like starting this journey if this is something that you're new to um ooh, how to spot and change your negative dating patterns that's a cool one I think I want to read that one um great sex experiments gone wrong uh that's cool oh what is kitchen table polyamory um how to experience compersion uh, the power of fleeting intimacy, right? So like there, ooh, how colonialism affects sexuality. Okay, right. So clearly there is like so much really great information on this app. And that's another thing that I really like. Um, you can also find all of this stuff on their Instagram too, if it's, you know, something you're interested in. Um, but yeah, so Field is like my number one, number one dating app right now. Uh, yeah, I'm on it. You'll probably see me on there. Um, But yeah, so that's kind of like my ranking of all of the dating apps. Um, Again, I think the most important thing, 
like I, dating apps get a really, really bad rap. And I understand why, but I have had great success on dating apps. I love using them. Like, yes, I would always rather meet somebody in person because then like right off the bat, you just get, you get to feel out like who this person is, what their vibe is. And it's just like instantly, you know, if you connect with this person or not. Whereas with a dating app, you may connect online, but then once you actually meet in person, Sometimes it's like, ah, there's just like no chemistry or like, ah, there's just nothing really here. Um, And that can be a bummer. But like, I still think the reason dating apps get a bad rap is it's all about your intention behind it. And I, like I have already said, it's really about being very, very clear about what you want and then being forward with that. Like, In my profile, I say very clearly, like, exactly what I'm looking for, um, the type of partner I want, like, I spell it out, right? So that way, if anybody messages me, like, hopefully they've read that and they already know, and, and, like, through talking with them, I'll be able to find out pretty quickly if they, like, didn't read my profile or not, um, But just being very, very clear and upfront about what it is that you are really, really looking for makes the experience so much better. And if you can, again, be very like picky about it or just very specific, then you'll weed out people who aren't a match and who don't fit what it is you're really looking for. And I can like guarantee that you'll go on all, all of your first dates will be decent you know I can't get obviously I can't guarantee you're gonna have like chemistry with every single first date um but I can guarantee that like it's at least gonna be a good experience that you're gonna be like wow like maybe I don't have chemistry with you but I think you're a cool person we really get along and like maybe you could at least be friends I know that's something that nobody likes to hear but I mean it's true because also part of it too is building community again it's like okay maybe you don't want to date this person but maybe you can be friends maybe they have a cool friend group that you can hang out with and like I think being open to that really changes things as well because then it's just creating more community for yourself in the place that you live um okay so I think that's it. Um, I really hope you enjoyed today's episode, like solo episode. It was fun just doing this on my own too. Um, You know, I do, I do miss having Mike because sometimes it's fun to like bounce ideas off of him and um, yeah, and he just always has like an interesting point of view. Um, But I thought this would be a great topic for a solo episode because you know, Mike hasn't really been on the dating apps that much. Um, he has been on field. He does have like a, a profile on field and our profiles are linked on field. Um, but he hasn't really spent much time like going through and like finding matches and chatting with people or even like going on a date. So <clears throat> that's still something that, um, you know, it's just new for him. So I figured this would be a great solo topic because, you know, I, I have a lot more to say on it than he does. So anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, if you've been enjoying the podcast, please rate and review. Um, if you haven't heard, we are, we have a resource list, a resource, a polyamory resource list filled with like books and podcasts and TV shows all about polyamory. So if that's something you're wanting to learn more about, um, we can send you this resource list if you rate and review our podcast on Apple Podcasts. So just click the stars, preferably five, please. Um, leave a little review like, wow, Elisa's amazing. She's the best. Or like, you know, no, actually leave like a, a real review of what you think. Um, take a screenshot and email it to hello at polyplusamore.com. All spelled out, Polly, P-O-L-Y, plus P-L-U-S, Amor, A-M-O-R, dot com. Um, take a screenshot, email it to hello at polyplusamore.com, um, and we will send you the resource list. It's as easy as that. Um, but yeah, even if that's not something that you want, we always really appreciate when you rate and review. That is how this podcast 
reaches more people. The more reviews we can get, the more downloads we get, please, please, please subscribe. Um, it just helps, you know, elevate the podcast and get it out to more people. Uh, and finally, yes, if you are looking for a community, once again, please join the pack. We would love, love, love to see you in there to chat with you. And yeah, I think that's it for today. So have a good one and we'll